Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com. Today's video is a little bit educational, um, a little bit marketing, like everything, but it's not really watch and learn. I reserve watch and learn for more real technical videos. Today is kind of a little bit of education and a little bit help me help you figure out why so many Seiko part numbers changed. So I did send out a newsletter um, a few weeks ago letting people know that a lot of the Prospects divers changed part numbers. You know, Seiko does not name their watches. Society names the watches. Um, but obviously everything's got a skew, you know, a, a part number. And that is what, besides names, you also market by skews. You know, when you try to sell an item or, you know, position yourself on search engines, whatever. Uh, and then Seiko goes along and changes, let's see what I got, five models so far. I'm sure there's more coming. Five part numbers to something totally different. And you gotta, you know, people are gonna ask questions. It's not like walking into a store when you, and you see a watch and you go, okay, I, I like that watch, I'll get it. You don't care what the part number is. Whereas when you're looking online, that's the way, a lot of, the, a lot of times that's the way you search. You'll type in the part number in, in Google or your favorite search engine and you wind up wherever you wind up. Uh, so now we have to be conditioned to almost search for these new numbers. So today's video is about why did this part number change happen? Um, it's kind of silly. Um, I can't say I fully agree with it. Uh, let's see. I have here an old SRP 777. Old. Let's, let's see. It's manufacture date of, no, look at that. February 2020. And I have a, let's see what this one is. Another, this is SRP 777 that I have in this hand. I'm going to show it to you in a second. I'm trying to look at the date. Manufactured June of 2020. And SRP E93. They are the same watch, okay? Same exact watch. Very slightly different markings at the six. Yes, the SRP E93 does say made in Japan. Does that mean they're always going to be made in Japan for the USA market? I can't answer that question. Um, but definitely going in the right direction, right? Uh, so that I have no answer to. I do not know if they're always going to be made in Japan. I always had a, I always had a Japan movement, but now made in Japan. The big difference and why they changed the part number is on the case back. So on the SRP777, I'm going to try to focus it there. You can see at the top of the watch, right above Seiko, it says uh, Air Divers 200 meter. So according to all my old watch and learns that I've done, whenever we say dive watch, we know immediately we're invoking ISO standard, International Standard Organization in particular ISO 6425. Um, I close it because it's, it is a copyright document. Um, parts of it are, are non-copy, non-subjected to copyright, but a lot of it, um, excuse me, a lot of it is. So I really don't want to show it on camera. Um, but the, it gives you all the specs what a dive watch must, must meet. Not only uh, water resistance, but a whole slew of other things. Uh, strength on the spring bars, uh, anti-magnetic, um, bezel markings, uh, oh, everything, over pressure, under pressure, a whole bunch of stuff. Anyway, there's a whole chapter on marking and it says only watches satisfying the requirements of the standard can be marked as divers. And the acceptable English marking is divers watch X meters, in this case, 200 meters. So divers watch 200 meters. This is a 2018 version. The last time this spec was revised was 1996. In 1996, it allowed you to write air divers on the watch. So, uh, what did I show you? I showed you the old one and it said Air Divers, right? Air Divers 200M. So now, if you, pardon the blue sticker. Can you see through the blue sticker there? Now it says Divers Watch 200 Meter. That is, yeah, Divers Watch 200 Meter. Yeah, that is the only difference in the watch and they changed the entire part number of the watch for you are getting the same exact watch. So SRP 777 discontinued, SRP E93 is the follow on. Um, I did write down, I'm gonna, I'll put them below, but the other watches, so SRP 777, and then we have SRP A21, SNE 435, SRPB51 and SRPB99. It seems these watches came out or were in the design phase 2018 or prior. That's why they have the old markings on them. The new spec came out in 2018. Uh, whereas your newer King Turtles and King Samurai, those that have come out, um, those were made with the current spec in mind. So the marking agrees with what's written in the spec. Now here's where for me it gets a little bit confusing, a little bit dicey. Um, these watches were 
sorry, again, the uh, 777, right? This was designed prior to 2018. So theoretically, Seiko was grandfathered in on this part number. They can write the old air divers on it. Um, they chose not to. Why? Uh, again, I don't know. I have a couple of ideas in my mind. It is possible that um, they possibly opened a new factory recently and decided just to work from the ground up and redo everything. You know, in the world of um, where I come from, in the world of aerospace and, and defense, everything uh, revolves around your class of change. There's a class one change or a class two change. You know, does your change affect excuse me, form, fit, or function, which this does not. So if we're not affecting form, fit, or function, why do we change the part number? We really shouldn't have to. Nobody in the field, again, I'm using, <laughs> I'm using terms from my old job, but the user is never going to notice a difference, so why change the part number? It's, it really, really isn't necessary. I mean, they even, they even revved up the instruction booklet. It's even got a rev date of 12, 2019. So they really take it very, very seriously. Um, but again, I don't really think it's all that important. Uh, there is, so why air divers? Just real quick, air diver, meaning you, you're mixing, you're mixing, you're breathing kind of air, regular scuba air, whereas saturation diving, that's a totally different um, kind of diving. Generally, 300 meter watches are saturation divers. Um, is a couple extra things in the spec that you have to meet. But they, uh, if you're, actually, if you're interested, uh, let's see. For mar marking of a saturation diver, it must say divers watch X meters or 200 meters or 300 meters for saturation diving. Um, that changed as well. Uh, I believe the 1996 spec said for helium gas or mixed gas diving or whatever it was. So that has changed as well. But anyway, the whole crux of the video is to let you know why Seiko changed the part numbers. Um, it wouldn't have been a change that I would have made. It kind of makes marketing for an online guy a little more difficult. Um, again, so I'm going to put links down below to all the, not the old products, I'm going to put links to the new products um, so you can find them uh, okay. The Made in Japan thing, I did check all of them that were replaced, that the partner was replaced, I think all said Made in Japan on the bottom of the dial, with the exception of the Quartz guy. It just says Movement Japan. So like I said, is this a change going forward? I cannot say. I don't know. Um, I did ask, and I kind of didn't get an answer, so I can't really answer that question. But um, I didn't even do my own wrist check. I'm sorry. Wow, I'm doing my great wave, and actually I have nothing on my other wrist, guys. I don't. So anyway, uh, this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com. Explaining to you a little Seiko part number change. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you've not done so. Questions or comments, put them down below, and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.